Hi there, Chris Straub here, and uh, I'd like to talk to you all a little bit about camshafts and, and uh, what I do as far as selecting camshafts for customers and how I go about that. And um, not going to explain it in detail, but just give you some of the things that I look at and the way I was taught uh, in this industry by the mentors that I've been able to have over the years and stuff. So, first and foremost, I call this the brain of the engine. Camshaft is the brain of the engine. And what it creates is a valve path. That valve path is created on the lobes. You got intake lobes and you got exhaust lobes. So this valve path has an area, which is the duration. That's the time that the valve is, is uh, open on this path. And you got stopping points, which are the closing events, and you have uh, starting points, which are the opening events and stuff. So basically the camshaft, it's all it does is create a valve path for that based on supply and demand. Well, what's supply and demand? Supply is air in and exhaust out. I refer to even though you're talking about intake and you're talking about exhaust, it is both the supply because what you have, what you bring in, part of that has to go out. Demand is created by piston speed. Piston speed is created by RPM and stroke. That sets the demand. So what you're trying to satisfy with the supply is the, is the demand that the engine has. And that demand is uh, what the camshaft, the brain, has to use the supply to satisfy with. So simply put, the brain has to know what supply is and what demand is. So when we ask customers questions on what they're doing, what's important to us is the RPM range, the type of fuel that they're using, uh, the estimated horsepower, what they'd like to have, uh, and then um, um, what cylinder heads and the combination of parts they've got. With that information, then we can design a camshaft where we possibly might have a semi-custom on the shelf that would work for you. And our semi-customs are just based on combinations of parts that we've sold for years or other people have sold for years that'll get a customer within 80 to 90% as far as their horsepower goal. Now, we're gonna shoot you straight. If you call us and you've got these heads and you've got this estimated horsepower, you wanna do it, and there's no way to get there, you don't have enough compression, don't have enough cylinder head, engine's not big enough, RPM's too low, RPM's too high, then we're gonna tell you the truth. Um, and remember, uh, horsepower's calculated, so it is a mathematical formula. What I've been taught over the years, I look at the flatness of the power curve within the RPM range that the customer wants and stuff. So that's what I look for. Um, LSA, I don't put a lot into LSA because it is a sum of numbers. At the end of all my calculations when I'm designing a camshaft, that sum of numbers, it is what it is. It's nothing that I judge camshafts. From what I've been told over the years, the old cam grinders back in the 50s and 60s, when you open that camshaft catalog up and you saw all those cool camshafts sitting there, LSA was a simple three digit number and it was great to market with because it was simple, three digits, just put that down there. So I don't put a lot of emphasis on that. Uh, I know the internet is full of people, this LSA does this and that does that. Well, I've got LSAs that are 107 in vehicles that make 15, 16 inches of vacuum. I've got stacked injection systems where people say you can't do this with that L a tight LSA. I've got stacked injection running and stuff. So what I encourage anybody to look at is, look at the valve events, look at the duration. One thing on duration, is, and this is a simple formula that I was taught by Joe Patel of HBH years ago, when the exhaust flows 75% of what the intake is, your duration numbers at 50 should be the same, okay? So now for every percentage point that you drop below 75%, you wanna put about a, a degree and a half favor towards the exhaust side. So let's take, it, we had an engine that's 70%, i.e. ratio. So that would be about seven and a half degrees. So let's say the intake is 250. You'd want the exhaust at say around 257, 256 to 258, 257, somewhere right around in there is what you're looking for. Now, on as we go up from that 75%, we actually favor the intake side. 
and there's a lot of buzzwords as far as uh, reverse split camshafts or, you know, um, uh, re re reverse camshafts, you know, people throw those terms and stuff around. And even the OEs use reverse split camshafts. When you look a lot of the import stuff, it's got a very high intake exhaust ratio. The exhaust flows 80, 90% of what the intake flows. The, even though they're overhead cams, the intake uh, camshafts are actually larger on those vehicles than the exhaust camshafts. So uh, as far as that being theory, uh, I don't feel that it's theory because the OEMs are doing it and they spend millions of dollars on research and development stuff. So as for a very high intake exhaust ratio above that 75%, you're gonna be looking at a camshaft that more than likely is gonna have more duration on the intake side. Um, some of my diesel stuffs are prime examples and stuff. The custom camshafts I do for diesels, uh, they've got more intake duration than they do exhaust duration. But I just want to go over a few points as far as a camshaft. You are creating a path for that valve. Uh, lift is the ability to make horsepower. Duration is the ability to sustain power to give an RPM range. And you've got to know your supply. You've got to know your demand. And once you do that, you can find the perfect brain for your motor. Thank you. And remember, at Straub Technologies, we build combinations. We don't build engines.